Shit, yeah. Alright, so now we are on to Spider-Man 2, and let me just say, a huge step up from its predecessor. I mean, you got everything right this time around, well, almost everything, and it's a huge, huge improvement. Going back into the time around for, with a new perspective, it really shows how well a superhero movie can be, especially when you get all the CGI right and polished out this time around. The supporting characters were fun, well, almost, I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the supervillain was awesome, and the whole storyline was pretty, pretty good for the most part. Apart from that other thing, I'll talk to you about that in a sec. But let me just get right down to the meat. So in Spider-Man 2, Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, is having some issues being a full-time Spider-Man while maintaining a job, a part paying the bills, going to school and completing all of his homework and whatnot, and pretty much all of that stress that he had pretty much led to a huge, which resulted in him becoming, well, powerless. And, th and throughout a good chunk of the movie, he decided to quit being Spider-Man for a while, and realize how relaxed he is, and decides that the, that the city needs him again, so he dons the mask once more to fight the villain that he's facing. And in this particular case, we were talking about Do uh, Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus, or Doc Ock. And I have to say that even watching this uh, in, today, in 2017, it's still, he's, it's still pretty fascinating to see a supervillain who is driven not by greed, but by the work that he does. I mean, this is a guy who had pretty much everything, a nice a nice house, a great wife, and an invention, and all he needed was to put his name on the world. One that would change everything, and what he wanted to do was create a miniaturized sun, which sounds interesting, but at the same time, can be a huge clusterfuck, because every time he builds the sun, he keeps forgetting about that magnetic gravitational pull that just fucking sucks everything in, which resulted in him pretty much getting his lab destroyed, his wife getting killed, and of course, leaving him with nothing other than the me mechanical arms on their back. And let me just say, for the special effects, as I said, uh, they were really, really nicely done and polished out this time around, unlike the first movie, where it was kind of choppy at, some, at points, but you can clearly tell from the Spider-Man mechanics, of uh, him wall crawling, web slinging, to the Dr. Octopus uh, mechanical arms, it was just fantastic. Especially when they mixed a little bit of CGI with the arms and some practical effects to make it work. And it clearly shows. The soundtrack was pretty good as always, especially when you have Danny, Danny Elfman at the, at the reins. You got a lot more of these characters returning, especially uh, them having their own developmental problems, but also at the same time, having being more flushed out, and it works so well, especially for uh, James Franco as Harry Osborn, who in the last movie saw apparently quote-unquote Spider-Man killing his father, so now he's driven by vengeance to actually find him, or find out who Spider-Man is, and of course he constantly harasses Peter Parker because of it. He's like, you're the only one who takes his pictures, uh, Peter, you would tell me who Spider-Man is, and he gets to a point where he kind of gets a little over the top at times, but it's, not, but it's not too much. This is a more better acting James Franco, unlike the in the last movie. Apart from the, tell me, brother, slap, 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 and I'm like, Okay, a little too over the top. <laughs> and uh, Kristen Dunst, of course, returns as Spider-Man's love interest, Mary Jane, but except this time around, she's dating she's dating and being engaged to um, what? John Jameson, the son of J. Jordan Jameson. And um, for some reason, even though she's she clearly tells him that he's moving that she is moving on, Peter Parker still goes out of his way to try to impress her or date her and everything else. And I'm like, dude, you just gotta get over it. You gotta move on. I mean, why not date the landlord's daughter or something? I mean, she's okay. And of course, uh, some of my more some of the more glorious supporting characters return from Elizabeth Elizabeth Banks as Betty Brant, who was, who was fun, as well as uh, J. Jonah Jameson or J. K. Simmons playing as J. Jonah Jameson, which is fun. What I what really drew me the action scenes and the fight scenes were a lot more spectacular this time around. And of course, Alpha Merlina as Doc Ock. He's a lot more of a better villain because, as I said, he's more driven by the work that he wants to do, even if it requires him to rob banks in order to buy the equipment or make a deal with uh, Harry Osborn to get some of that uh, extra tritium j just so he can complete his work, which he does. So he's a guy who will do pretty much anything to get the job done. And another thing I like about the, the Doc Ock character, especially in this movie, is that you don't really need fancy costumes or a, a maniacal lab or anything like that. All you need is just a white shirt, 
some slacks, and a really kick-ass trench-coated fedora to go with it. Yeah, I would wear one, but I really don't have it. And he was pretty awesome, especially the way his uh, manner and the way he talks is pretty awesome as well. Especially when he has, uh, when he threatens Peter Parker like, if you don't deliver Spider-Man to me, I'll strip Mary Jane's flesh down to the bone. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, that is just great. Um, some of the drawbacks I really did have a problem with, especially with a couple of the supporting characters like the actor who played John Jameson, he was a little redundant, if not just there at times, and it's just, even though he's supposed to play an important character being engaged to MJ, especially near the end of the movie, where she's, she's caught after Mary Jane finds out that Peter Parker's Spider-Man, he just stands there like a doof, like, oh, she just left me at the altar. Okay. And that's it, and she just runs across the city just to get to, just to get to Peter Parker's ass and accept him for who he is, which I was like, okay, I guess that's one way to close off, you know, to sync up their relationship together. But overall, it's a very fun movie. It's all, it's near perfect, but, and I do have to say it is one of the best Spider-Man movies to date. I mean, up until Spider-Man Homecoming that comes out, but who knows, maybe that, that will tank under Marvel Studios. Yeah, right. My final rating for this movie is still, it has its uh, imperfections, but it tends to push those aside in order for it to get to the meat of the story. I mean, I would have to give this movie a 4 out of 5 stars. And uh, you would think that with a movie that's well polished and well good, I said, wow, I really can't wait for Spider-Man 3 and see how it all wraps up. Yep, Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3. Mother Anywho guys, thank you for watching. If you guys like what you see, feel free to hit that subscribe button, like it, comment, and all that other fun junk. If you guys want to support me or have any movie vlog requests for your own, uh, feel free to hit up that Patreon button as well. Yeah, I'm. it's there, and I'm willing to take any requests for the right price. So, I'll see you all next time.